How's it going? It's Walt, and I am here in the lounge with Tobias Forge from Ghost. Tobias, awesome to have you hanging out with us today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me. No, it, it's incredible what what you've created over the past 10 years or so. Where did it all start? What did you listen to growing up? I listened to a lot of different music, like a lot of different kinds of music, and, and uh, I, I guess most of it was... Um, rock oriented right um but uh it, you know it was everything from what my mother came with you know the the whole 60s like the, everything the, like, like rolling stones beatles john right. janice joplin jim hendrix doors right. all that uh pink floyd um via my older brother who who was generally i i guess he like subculturally he would sort of confess himself as being like more of a punk rocker i guess okay what kind but, of stuff did he listen to like sex pistols and that kind of punk or yes sex pistols i guess was like the, the like the the big motor sort of fave right. punk band but it, it was everything that sort of branched out from there right clash damned Right, so you name it, like th th that whole thing, and he was, you know, remember also that he was he was a teenager when I was a kid. Okay, so, so when it, I was three, he was sixteen. So okay. it was, which is awesome <laughs> to have a guy like that who's got some musical, you know, knowledge that he can uh, fill your vessel with at that point, right? Because I mean, like he grew up with the punk stuff. You have your mother's stuff. When did you decide what's your music? What was like? I'm branching out. I'm going to be Tobias. What was that music? I think that was specifically the one moment that I I don't know if I remember this but but I I I have I have a memory of us I was with him we were in the city like where we lived and back then like not to reminisce and be totally nostalgic about that but you know even sure. in our little city 150,000 it wasn't even 150,000 at the time it was probably 130,000 it was still like seven record stores wow so you could walk around all over town like just within this little like a couple squares right uh like at plazas and there were uh several and um we were at one and he was picking up records and um he used to, you know, since he was the, um, he was my older brother and it was just the three of us, me, my mother and him. And, um, uh, he used to take care of me a lot. And uh, so I was hip with him and uh, he picked up Love Gun with Kiss. Right. With the actual paper gun that... Unfortunately, no. <laughs> it, 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 it must have been used. Right, because it did so, right. Because it didn't... It, it didn't uh, as far... I, I have never... It's throughout my whole childhood. It never, there was never a gun in there. All right, I have it now, but but <laughs> I was gonna say, in my old, you've copy, seen it now, right? Where it, right, the paper gun that bang, yeah. But in my old copy, if, if there it wasn't one. There wasn't one, um, and I immediately because he he picked up a lot of different records, but I I immediately gravitated towards it, and he just like, well, you can have it, and that was my first record. Uh, it's funny because uh, uh, it was Kiss Alive that was my pinnacle record that changed, you know, my history of of music. And then it, I went from there to Alice Cooper and uh, picked up on that whole genre and scene, which uh, obviously I think you have a, a history with, or at least uh, an affiliation with. Yeah. No, but it, so it's it's for me. To, it's very hard to like. Uh, pinpoint the origination of like the or origin of of the egg or the right or the hen you know yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. i can't really say say because it's like uh, my brother was also a big fan of like acdc and rainbow and and um i've known and listened to motorhead for for as long as i can remember like same thing with black sabbath that's cool because i mean so it's all ramones of, like all of that stuff I, I can actually hear and gets filtered into ghost i think when you listen oh to it. definitely yeah it oh absolutely especially like the, the the big classics as i said like black south ramones um uh, sex pistols i think that when 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 i started sort of finding my own thing um was like i, I think it was definitely an attitude thing with with hard rock 
especially at the time, because this was the early 80s. I was about three, four years old. Right. So this is 1984. And the big ones, the big hard rock acts at the time, especially in Sweden, uh, uh, was Twisted Sister and Motley Crue. Right. And um, Wasp was huge. Like, And Kiss was still, I mean, they they just done sure. their re- re- transition. I have a vague memory of seeing them on TV when I was very small, like, like very original little, with makeup. Yeah, with yeah. the makeup. Yeah. So that must have been well, cause like that early was... eighty three or late eighty two. But right. the, the, but I am, and also I'm I am I have a I have a good memory. When I, I my my memories sort of go right. far far back. But obviously they're very grainy, and I just remember being in front of the TV, and maybe it was a throwback. I don't remember. I just know I know that depending on which living room it was, and I know that we moved away from that apartment at a certain <laughs> date, and I know I saw Kiss in makeup on that TV. So when did um, you, when did, when did you start, did you start playing instruments? At what, at what age did you start playing? I started playing guitar when I was six or seven. Uh, before that, I, um, I played the broom. <laughs> you played the broom? <laughs> um, my, my mother, uh, I don't necessarily remember her as a like a keen knitter but she had knitting sticks right like that was about this long so they, they looked a lot like, like drumsticks don't they, they did and we had like a an old couch that it was not a chesterfield couch but it, it looked like one you know with sort of bumps sure. like muscles right. on it and uh eventually when we sort of got rid of that it was completely beat up because i had been playing drums with it because it felt like it sounded like it sounded good too right and there was like a slight little boom 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 that thing you could do sure it sounded like rototoms but i play the drums a lot on that one and i used to jump around in it like with my with a, the broom and so then your early bands they were more along the the, the black death metal sound yes uh, you mean my, your, my bands that I started? Band. Yes. Yes. By the time that I got to the age where where I was uh, able to sort of have my first goes at at putting bands together, uh, I was twelve, thirteen, around there. I tried before, but it was very hard to find people in my age right. group that was sort of into that. Into Most, the same kind of music that you're into, or just yeah. And I, I was a little bit all over the place as well. Like in terms of, I, I listened to metal, I listened to Rolling Stones, I listened. Like I had a lot of different. I, I wasn't really sure about my orientation, but when I finally sort of decided that now I'm going to start my first band, I was in seventh grade. That's when you're thirteen. Um, and, uh, that was, um, yeah, that was death metal, black metal. Right. So you said, I've heard you say that at the, the, the impetus of ghost started when you kind of fell on a riff for stand by him, right? Mm. Um, accidentally stumbled on that riff or how did that song come about? As you do when you're, when you're a guitar player, I guess you just fiddle around. You just play a little bit of. Well, others riffs, and then you sort of do a little bit of yours, and and then you sort of you just kind of mangle. tinker. Yeah, yeah. So, what and kind of music were you playing at the time when you stumbled on that? Two thousand six. I was um, at the time. I had um, my own band. It was called Subvision, uh, where I was like the sole music writer and, right. and the singer and the guitar player. And, um, which I don't know how to describe it. That was like, well, I, we, my intention with that band was to be some sort of, some sort of mixture between, um, I liked a lot of like n- old New York bands at the time, like Blondie and okay. Television and, okay. and, and right. stuff Great. like that. From so the seventies. Yeah. 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 So I wanted it to be like a mixture. Imagine like if, if Dead Boys was a little bit more musical Okay. Uh, no offense against the Dead Boys. I love Dead Boys, um, but I wanted them to be a little bit more like fine tuned, right? A little bit more like television, but I wanted television, but television to, be, to be a little bit more like Dead Boys. Yeah, I totally get it. But sort of looking like Guns N' Roses did in 1987. So I wanted it to be like a, I don't know, some sort of 
power punk pop band on steroids. And I think we ended up being like nothing of it because it was just all over the place. Right. It was very unfocused. Uh, a lot of people say that um, a lot of things that I'm doing with Ghost now is very reminiscent of, of what we used to do in, in Subvision, and that's probably correct. Um, had time been on our side with Subvision, there's a likelihood that that would have just continued and musically would have probably could have become what Ghost is in, right. in, in a sense. Um, but since sort of Subvision was sort of farting out and I was spending some time also in 2006 um, playing bass in, in friends of mine, they had a band um, and I was just playing bass in that just for f fun. I was just doing, that was more recreational in, in a way because um, um, despite most of my time throughout my life have been spent being like the <laughs> sort of dictator in my own band, right. I actually do enjoy just playing in others as well to whatever extent I've done it. Like very little, <laughs> right? But had my, if, if there's no I, pressure, there's no pressure that way. I mean, you just you just up there. I'm just playing my bass parts. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, absolutely. And and also this the time that I've spent sort of in the background, I've I've also had I also in 2006 and and, and onwards when when sort of Ghost was sort of uh, began um, to appear in my head, my intention was to just to play guitar. I just wanted to, I wanted to write everything and I wanted to like but do not, backup but not vocals. be the front and center. No, no, no. I just wanted to be the guitar player. That's 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 always been my in my head I am a guitar player. And isn't that funny because in Ghost now we never see you play go, uh, guitar. No. Is that is that weird? Is that does that not you or it's like I really kind of want to play these songs that I've created. Uh, in a way, um, it's not weird because now obviously I'm conditioned into right being uh, this singer guy. Um, but if if I had my way, and and definitely in an alternative future, if yeah. whatever happens, you know, I, I could definitely picture myself sort of getting someone else to sing and just play guitar. I love playing those songs myself. So it's like, right. I, obviously I don't do it very often. And if, I, if I'm just giving a guitar, I have to re refresh my memory. Right. Um, and I'm, I'm, of course, the more time I spend sort of jumping around doing other things, the, the less I play guitar, which is it's a little bit of a cycle where, you know, every time I come home, I, I play a little bit more and then I go on the road and I play a little bit less. And then as, you, as soon as I go in the studio again, I have to really, really, really like get my chops up again sure so how does a ghost song start does it start with a guitar noodle that you're working with is it a lyric it can start either or like a, it, it can start with basically anything from a drum beat or a rhythm um to a vocal line to just a melody to a riff um most of the time I'd say it's melody driven. Right. Like there, there is usually a chord change that I sort of gravitate towards first. So usually, if you, if you want to be um, uh, dissect the music, I'd say that I usually go for the hook first. Sure. Uh, and which then is strong. I that because that's the one that one thing that sort of gets me into it. Right. So whatever there's like that skewed chord or that thing that sort of makes you like, eh, Ooh, that's that's, that's usually the first yeah. part of the song. Um, and if I do the other way around, like I start with only a riff and I don't have the the hook and the, it usually doesn't really end up being anything because right. I I don't work that way. I, I I usually when I have the melody and when I have the structure and the hook and the 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 scar in it that's when I start sort of fiddling around with riffs around it. I really, uh, b being a musician myself, I'm, I'm fascinated by how ghost songs don't, they're not necessarily square. And what I mean by that is like, you know, it's like eight bars verse and then you have, you know, four bars pre-chorus and then, I mean, everything flows into itself in a very natural way, but it's not necessarily just, you know, four on the floor the whole time. 
Um, no. How do you, is that something that you, you strive for? Or is it just how you hear the music in your head? Um, it depends. I mean, sometimes I strive towards straightening a song out as well. Right. Because there's always like, um, uh, <laughs> I don't know if there's a word for it, but uh, during one of the records, but I, when I was making Meliora, uh, the producer of that record that I made the record with, Klaus, he called it the Prague suicide. And that's when you're trying to be smart. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I definitely picked up on that where, especially listening to a lot of my old stuff, it's, it's filled with that sort of like, I'm trying to be clever right. stuff. Um, and I think that there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a forum for that. You can do that to a certain extent. But also, when you when you try to make things complicated, that's definitely when you when you opt to lose a lot because you lose the, if you trick the listener too much, you will also lose the listener. I think if, there's something to the saying uh, "simple sells," right? Because look at Nirvana; they're basically simple three chord pop songs. Yeah, I mean, and and I think "sell" is is uh, maybe um, a, a word that people sort of shun away from just because it implies that it's commercial. Right. But it's it's not even that. I mean, it's it's there's a reason for for a lot of punk music that sold nothing. Right. Has 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 outlived there's many other pop songs. But yeah, because it's easy. It it resonates Digestible. with your you with your with your. Um, psyche whatever mm -hmm. and um, sometimes if you are um, a musician and a songwriter and kind of like myself as well I grew up listening to a lot of proggy stuff one of my favorite records or my t two favorite records growing up and starting playing guitar was uh, the uh, the first two Pink Floyd records oh, because nice. I got it from my mom it was called The Nice Pair and it was <laughs> uh, uh, Sorcerer Piper. Full of Secrets and A Piper, Piper at the Gates yeah. of Dawn and that really, really fucked my, my music's writing up yeah. a lot because I started writing weird chord changes and I started doing things in half measures and like half... <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, exactly what we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and for as long as I've been in bands, people have told me like, oh, that's weird. That's so strange. I can't... Why, why are we doing that? Because it sounds good. Yeah. Um, but still, I, I need to be aware right. of that that's the sort of smart shit that there, there's that can a fine lose line there between when you're trying too hard and when it sounds natural yeah it's kind of like linguistically as well it's it's nice if you have a wide vocabulary and you can you can right. use it right but Start. also if you're if you're talking in legalese there's also a certain um um thoroughness or direct communication that can be lost within that yeah so it's I think it's it's important to be aware. You can speak a little bit of legalese, and you can also speak slang and street, and that way, you can be a little bit elastic when it comes to communicating. And I think that that is important with music as well. You need to know how to do both thing, things. Really? I can write a really weird prog thing, <laughs> but in order to, to for that to be digestible, it needs to be a little bit of four on the floor as well somewhere in yeah. order to sort of work out. Makes total sense. How is the lyrics? that you've written for Ghost changed over the four records? Uh, in the beginning, when I had no idea that this was, this was going to be music digested by a lot of people, yeah. it was definitely a little bit more oriented about, uh, around what I thought was cool. Like, um, it was more... Play, like paying homage to a certain style of, of lyrics that I grew up listening to. Right. Uh, you know, be it uh, death metal, black metal, or or Angel Witch, or, or stuff like that. So I, I wanted to be uh, have a certain aura. Um, whereas, I mean, you can write so many lyrics about black candles burning. <laughs> After a while, it gets very, very repetitive, and, yeah. uh, and I'm sure you, there's there's a lot of cult rock bands that are just regurgitating that stuff. And I am a, a lifelong and will forever, as as long as I live, be a, a, a devotee and a, and a fan of that sort of lingo. Um, but making records after 
opus eponymous i definitely felt that well there there's a there's a way to wrap that in but you know you need to say something there there needs to be some sort of substance on the first record i wasn't really paying attention to that because i just wanted to make a real cool record that i wanted to listen to right whereas on the second it was just like well if you have all these people listening you might as well say something <coughs> i have a lot of things on my mind so why not i wanted to ask um so now that you've you've created a platform to where people are paying attention to what you have to say. Do you feel a responsibility to use that in a responsible way to say something that is meaningful to the people that are listening? Yes. Oh yeah. Uh, like still, I, I need to also bear, you know, keep in mind that this is first and foremost, most an entertainment act. We're not political yeah. in that sense even though I think that a lot of things I'm saying is obviously resting on some sort of political sure opinion uh, base uh, but that's not the point however I know that there are a lot of people um, in our fan base that are listening and there are a lot of things that we have in common and there are a lot of things that I believe that could be communicated in in one way or another to um, uh, sympathize or empathize, emphasize and empathize as well and, right. and also to comfort and, and to try to when you, you know th- yeah, yeah I, I definitely think that there's a you have a little bit of a responsibility to communicate somewhat with your fans right but i think that if you're most artists do that naturally do you ever create with the ghost fans experience in mind like i'm gonna i'm writing this song what is the ghost fan gonna think about like maybe maybe you think this is kind of weird for a ghost song or what is a ghost fan gonna think about this do you ever think about the fan experience when you're writing creating even and, and even During, for even for the for the live experience for the live show, I mean, probably more so there than you do for maybe the song. But definitely from a live point of view, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think about that all the time. Like, how will this? How are we able to do this? Uh, it's it's like writing a script. You you need to you need to when wording lines, you need to um, like try them out. Like, how do you say that? Like, what what is? How do you say that? line in order to make it and the same way when you're writing music you you need to sort of write write it and arrange it in a way so that uh it will feel good on on a stage yeah. if you're a band like us playing in front of a lot of people uh or even in front of people in the first place if if you if your intention is not to play in front of people fine you it, but but it needs to feel good either way right but as soon as you're, you're you've stepped up on a stage and you, you and you're you're asking people to pay money for it you you are definitely in charge of 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 their evening and and um, you might as well do things that sounds and feels pleasant for all of for, you for them yeah um, when did the idea of having a persona like Papa front the band when did that come into play because it's been there from the beginning early days um again the hen and or the chicken and the egg there it's like when i think back of my whole musical career if you want but by my whole for as long as i've been wanting to be in a band or been trying to be in a band and i've always been very image oriented and Subvision had an image, Repugnant had an image, even the bands before that was sort of image driven. Mm -hmm. And before I had a band, I was definitely always picturing myself being in an image um, uh, embraced band. Um, So, I mean, I've always been under the assumption that in order to be an artist, that was interesting enough to stand on a stage. You have to be something different than what I am. Um, and uh, even though I intellectually I, I understand that that if you know when I was a kid I thought I was going to transform into another person because I thought that 
there's no no chance in hell that someone from my street with my background was was going to become a rock star. Right. So in order to become a rock star, I need to transform into another person, which felt per- per- perfectly natural. Right. Uh, now, years later, <laughs> it's funny how little has actually changed from that. I mean, I haven't really strayed from that path. I transform into someone else in order to feel like I am would it, part of that. Would it be completely foreign for you as Tobias to stand on stage and sing these songs? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't feel cool with that. Yeah. Um, when uh, you've, you've gone through uh, three incarnations of Papa, and then made the switch to Cardinal Copia. Was that, which is like not part of, you know, so there's, there's three Papas and now Cardinal is like a very different persona. Hmm. Um, did, do you think that we've built Ghost on this image of Papa and now really kind of changing the front man here? Is that, was that, I guess, anxiety ridden when you made a change like that or did you just like this is just how the storyline is going uh both <laughs> okay yeah i mean uh i knew that we were we were um the, the, uh, that was in the making for years i wanted to to uh sort of present a figure that hadn't already risen to to the prominence or whatever to, to, right, to the, right, right. the exaltation of being the one um, because I thought that it was getting very repetitive doing it one more time like, okay here's another one right right um, and uh, I also thought that the um, the script needed a little bit of chewing resistance um, but when you know push comes to shove I always feel very anxious about things like that. It's always uncomfortable, like shedding skin and right. and, and doing something completely different. Completely different. It's not completely different, but 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 it I, is. Change I mean, is is it's, 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 it's it's you know to the outside world. It's like there's a new singer now in Ghost. When there's yeah there's not, but but it sounds the same. But it, the music's the same. But the persona is different. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. Uh, I I think it's um, it's one of those schizophrenic um, uh, issues that uh, some someone like me have. I'm a stickler for routine. I'm a stickler for repetition, and and I want. I'm a control freak. Um, still, I have I have a lot of problems with doing things in time and 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 sticking with scripts. My my. My script is sort of in here, and it right. just goes. And um, and I'm also very keen on transforming all the time. So it's there's like <laughs> this sort of uh, thing that that I've, I'm I'm just lucky that I've been ab- able to find an outlet where 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 that handicap, which is essentially is, uh, I've been able to sort of transform that into to a, something. It's uh, an asset. As an asset. Yeah. Um but but it's a struggle as well and I I um Yeah, I, I definitely don't think it's it, it it's not comfortable all the time. But it gets after a while, it gets better. Um but there's been uh, over the last couple of years there's definitely been um a great growth and expansion in in my thought process around the 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 story, if you will. Mm-hmm. And how where I would like to go with it um and so far i i i mean if you want to be like a, a scheduling i think that there's definitely a three four years of of hard like this is how moving along as, as far as i've gotten in my head i think that we can do this much is an album and it's a film and this is this and there's a series and there's a cartoon and there's a comic and there's a but if if we get to do all those things and it's well, it's fascinating we'll that you you that you've gone wide like that too with film and comics and cartoons because one of the things I love is that there seems like when you watch the the rollout of Cardinal Copia 
and those webisodes or whatever the chapters, the videos. Mm. Um, there's a sense of humor here, and it, it lightens the mood and it brings makes you just want to wrap your arms around it more. Is that intentional? Do you think about this stuff that we need that element to bring people in? Now I do. Originally. It was um, <laughs> it was basically our our uh, the head of the label our 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 A and R I guess it was Tom Wally it was just like where's the story like what story like we need a story <laughs> oh, okay like what do you mean like the story can't tell that like you want my story I don't know there needs to be a story <laughs> I was like okay I'll come up with a story then and right. then you'll have to Try to monetize on that. <laughs> that was basically it because I didn't want to say anything first. Right. Originally, the idea was that I wasn't going to do interviews at all. Right. Um, but that didn't work. <laughs> obviously. So, like, and now obviously it's 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 become this sort of two parallel universes because I'm I mean I am here I'm I am telling you my story like and and you know at 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 some point in time there might be an, an a chance or a, an opportunity or a forum for speaking about the sort of the band story right um i don't think that that is nowhere near as interesting and i don't think that that is n anything that's worth talking about yet We've just been around for 10 years. Give us, give me 30 years. Like I can, then we can talk about and it. And there's a story. I think there's already a story, but I think I understand what you're saying. Like, let's, let's put some more meat on the bone. Yeah. yeah. But now luckily it, it sort of transformed into something that creatively had, has also, you know, enticed me into uh, working with it because there, it's a, it's a great way to also broaden out a little, like not only aesthetically because it's fun to make, clips but it's it's also uh, as i said i i think that there are a few things and a few messages that i i want to convey to people and and that isn't necessarily something that you can write a song about there's like a th thread of that throughout the songs but there are things in there especially with the whole episodes thing mm -hmm. that is of importance that has to do with life and death and acceptance and growing and aging and um, we, we we'll get to we'll it. Get there. Awesome. We'll get there. It's it, there is a point. There is a point, and ha it and it's. I think it's positive. I think it has. You know, it's important for people to to understand certain things. That's why we make films. That's why we like seeing films. That's why we listen to music. That what. That's why we read and write books. It's in order to sort of help people through life and accept things. And that's it's a sort of a communal therapeutical thing that we do and we, we regard it as culture but it's also a way for us to educate ourselves together so now you're about to embark on probably the biggest tour you've done here in the states uh, later on this fall playing arenas uh, how how Im important is that i mean like obviously it's something that you've strived for your entire career uh, to get to, to this point what can we expect on the tour coming up this fall um, well, first and foremost, the one thing that I am very happy about is the fact that we are able to do the big show that we've been talking about for, for a long time and, and do it consecutively, like, and not only as, as we did last year on the fall tour, we could only do it sort of right. in New York, Montreal, and LA. Um, with the big staging and, and all that. But it was still, you know, sort of pieced together on those nights as opposed to something that you can rehearse with, that you do consecutively and you fine-tune over the course of several nights, um, which is for a, for a touring multi-truck sort of full production arena show, it's not like something that you do on one night. Right. It takes time to get it right takes a lot of planning it's a lot of fine tuning and, and all that and i'm very happy now that we're doing a tour where we can we can honestly say that if you come and see us in kennewick 
<laughs> we'll do the whole thing for right. you. There's you're like gonna, not it's not like restricted where all oh, we will really, experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, you know, something that I've been really, really working hard on. Like I, I really want Ghost to if there was like a like a goal um, that it doesn't really have to do with numbers or like the amount of people that we're talking playing in front of. Of course, it would be great to play in front of fifty thousand people every night. But for me, the most important thing is to play at a level where we can bring the whole show with no restrictions to anyone that sees us. Even if we are like we no like segregation between if we're playing Manhattan or Sudbury, like we Doesn't will bring matter. the whole thing. That's awesome. Well, I, I'm looking forward to seeing that show. Um, Tobias, thanks for taking some time, hanging out, and uh, giving us a little uh, peek behind the, the mask, if you will, or what goes on in Ghost. Thanks so much, man. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you. Tobias Forge from Ghost.